Tutorial 1, Part 5, Material Classification, Structures and Properties. This part is the most important part in this tutorial, and we will try to introduce some general types of materials, and try to explain some general material properties by the bondings of atoms and molecules within these materials. In engineering, we classified all materials in the following four categories. Metals consists of the, all the metals, such as ferrous metals, iron, carbon steels, and some alloys, and such as brass and etc. Ceramics includes glasses, glass, glass ceramic, graphite, and diamonds, and etc. Polymers include some um, plastics such as thermal plastics and thermal set plastics. Between them, if the material is consists of more than one metals, more than one type of um, materials, for example, if this is consists of metals and polymers, we call it composite. If it is consists of both metals and ceramic, we also call it call it composites. For example, concrete is consists of ceramic and metal. Reinforced plastic is consists of plastic and metal, etc. And we call it composite. Metals. As its name suggests that the atoms inside the metals are bonded by metallic bond and their structure is giant metallic structure. As one thing is metallic bonds are non-dimensional and it stings throughout the solid. And there is some example, iron and sorbic sodium, etc. Quality of metals. Shiny, they are shiny and they have a good thermal or electric conductivity. It is because there is free electrons between metal ions. Second, they are generally hard and have a high boiling point. It is because metallic points are strong and they are throughout the full solid. They make the complete breaking of metallic bonds very, very difficult. Because boiling uh, requires the complete breaking of metallic bonds. And they are also very ductile because sliding of metal ions are easily done without complete breaking or non-dimensional metal bonds as shown in this picture. There is still metal bonds after the deformation which can be formed between two pieces of metals. Structures of ceramics they are basically giant covalent or giant or ionic or in between them. If you still remember ionic characteristics. Ionic and covalent bonds are extended throughout the solids. For example, aluminum oxide. They have a bonding of partially ionic and partially covalent. And you can see here, it is extended throughout the solid and connect every single atom or ions within this piece of solids. Diamond. It is completely giant covalent, and all of the, their atoms are carbon. And there is a special example. It is also ceramic, but it is somehow different from other two. Graphite. It is completely giant covalent, and all at atoms here are carbon, but it has a different structure with diamond. You can see here. For diamond, the bondings extend throughout the solid. But for graphite, the covalent bond will extend only for a single layer. And between layer and layer, they are connected by a secondary bonding. And they are connected by forces, those dispersion forces. Ceramics have a poor electric or heat conductivity. It is because there is no free electrons as all electrons are localized by atoms or ions. Second, they are very hard and have a high, high 
melting or boiling points. It is because there is strong covalent or ionic bonds throughout the whole solid, and which requires complete breaking. And it is even higher than the bonding is even stronger than those metallic bonds. However, it is very very brittle because sliding of atoms requires breaking of direction directional covalent bonds. The, the sliding of ions will also break ionic bonds. For example, for this piece of ionic materials, when we try to deform it, just deform it by little, it can already deform the regular shape, regular arrangement of those ions. And given a very slightly change of the locations, we will result in a repulsion force due to the light charge. And that means it is very, very brittle, unlike those metals. For graphite, it is quite special. The first thing, it can conduct electricity because it do have three electrons in carbon layers. For each carbon, la carbon atoms in a single layer, they are bound to three single covalent bonds. But there is still one valence electron, which is free. And it has a high melting and boiling point, which is the reason is same with the ceramics. And there is strong covalent bond throughout the layers of the solid. You still need still needs a complete breaking. But it is soft and brittle because the layers of carbons are bound by dispersion forces, which is here which is here, and which is very, very weak, and which allows the easy sliding of carbon layer, which is, which means that it is very, 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 very soft. In terms of polymer, it consists of very, very long molecules, which we call it Markov molecules, and the intermolecular forces are produced by our secondary bondings. There is several different kinds of arrangements of these very, very long mo molecules. For example, linear, branches, or cross linked And those very, very long molecules are actually bound by some single small molecules. Or before the polymerization. Polymerization is the forming of those very long molecules. They are consist of all monomers, or in other terms, those small single molecules. After some reactions, they form those Marco molecules, which is very, very long and self repeating. Some properties of polymer they have a very poor electric or heat conductivity, as there is no free electrons, which is, and those electrons are localized by atoms and ions. Second, they have a very low melting points and they are generally softer because intermolecular forces are weak and there is no primary bonding between molecules. And the third one is they can be very, very elastic due to the network structures of those macromolecules. Structures and properties of molecular substance. They are volatile, they are soft, and they have a very, very low melting and boiling points. It is, it is because intermolecular bonds are covalent bond, but intermolecular forces are very, very weak. For example, ice and some non-metals, but excluding carbons and etc. As their molecules are very, very small, which can be cons compared to polymers, they will arrange in such way, and you can see that those forces between those uh, molecules are basically just secondary bondings. And this proves the, proves the point for the first point, which is here. And therefore, this is such molecular substance or molecular solids are generally not good engineering materials. And I would like to add this part mainly for the completeness and the understanding of basic bondings and structures 
and their relations between each other.